Hey guys, it's Steve here from CG Geek with another Blender tutorial. Now, you might find this tutorial being your part one for a lot of future tutorials. And that is because this tutorial is covering nature assets. So these nature assets range from basically grass to flowers to rocks to anything you'd be using in a nature scene. And uh, the reason I'm making this tutorial is because I find myself quite often making the same assets over and over every time I want to make a nature scene. And instead of showing that over and over and over again in different tutorials, I'm showing you how to do it in this tutorial. Now, if you don't have time to create all these nature assets on your own, I did just release a new product on the Blender market, and that is the Low Poly Blender Nature Asset Pack. This pack is 17 different textures and models of different nature assets, ranging from grass to rocks, to weeds, to flowers, and uh, basically a bunch of professionally created assets for your scenes. So if you're interested in that, check it out there. But uh, And that's awesome. You would be supporting me and the Blender Institute if you decide to pick that up for just 10 bucks. Uh, if you don't have the money and you like creating things on your own, well then this tutorial is for you. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Okay, so first off, you're going to need some textures. Now, I just created a tutorial on shooting your own textures, so you can check that out if you want to create some of your own textures. Otherwise, you'll have to uh, purchase some or get some from something like cgtextures.com, though those can't be used for commercial work, but if this is just personal, you can use the textures on CG Textures. Otherwise, the textures that come with my Nature Asset Pack will also work great for this, so that's a bonus if you buy the pack. Anyways, enough talk. So uh, to start off, I'm going to delete everything in my scene. I'm going to switch to Cycles Render 2. And I'm going to enable a few add-ons. So I always like to enable these add-ons whenever I'm working in Blender because I use them all the time. So Import Images as Planes, that's one of them. Just go to Add-ons and start searching for Plane. You'll see it right there. Check it. Next one will be um, Node Wrangler. This is an awesome one to speed up your workflow when working with nodes. And the last one will be the sapling add-on. So just start typing sapling and enable that one. Awesome. So like I said, before you can start, you need to have some textures. So you can either gather these textures from CG textures, you can make them yourself, or you could use the textures from the asset pack that I created. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these textures that I've created. And to do that, I'm going to go Shift A and import images as planes. Okay, so here I have a lot of my textures that I used right here, and I'm just gonna open up this single blade of grass. All right, so before I can do that actually, all right, so I'm gonna go Shift A, import images as planes, and here I have some of the textures that I've created, and these are some of the textures that will also come with the Nature Asset Pack. Uh, I'm going to use the single grass blade right here, but before I import it, I want to change some of the settings here. This can speed up our workflow a little bit. Um, you see we have the material settings here for cycles, so I want to choose diffuse and transparent. And now the next setting I want to choose, and this is important, you want to use use alpha, and we'll change that to pre-multiplied. So make sure you check that, it's an important setting right there. And once those are both checked, you can go import images as planes. Okay, so this is just a simple blade of grass. Nothing fancy. So what I want to do is tab into edit mode and holding control, I'm going to pull this so the base is at the point. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Uh, let me go top view and hit five on my keyboard so I can do more detailed movements holding control. And I'll just snap it up till it's sitting right on that little origin point right there. And now if I go rendered, you can see the base of the grass is right about at that point. I could actually move it to the right a little bit here too, just so it's sitting right on that point. All right, cool. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few cuts in this mesh here. So I'm going to go Control R, scroll my wheel, and that will give me the option to put some cuts on this mesh. So I want to keep this low poly, so I'm only going to put four down. All right. Great, and now what I'm gonna do is grab that whole blade, go into side view with number pad three, and let me tab out of edit mode real quick and rotate that up. 
right about straight. Maybe just crooked a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to tab back into edit mode and turn proportional editing on. And with proportional editing on, I'm going to grab the sharp proportional editing fall off right there in my uh, proportional editing settings. Grab these top vertices. I'll have to check this box here so I can select the vertices I can't see right there. And I'm just going to rotate them. So rotate them something like that and then grab and move them as well to be something like that. Now that's a little bit severe, so I'm going to kind of just tweak these a little bit and pull them out a little bit. Something like that. And now I'm going to choose smooth shading also. Boom. Cool. So now if I go rendered view, you should have a blade of grass just kind of sitting there and coming up on a curve. Beautiful. So what are we going to do with this blade of grass? Well, let's make a bunch more of them. So tab into edit mode. And with my cursor still at the center point there, if it's not there, you can just go shift S, cursor to center. Um, I'm going to uncheck proportional editing because I can't have that on for this. So turn that off. And then I'm going to hit period on my keyboard, which changes this setting here and sets it to your 3D cursor as your pivot point. So now I can go shift D and rotate it around that pivot point, even though I'm in edit mode adding more blades of grass. So I'm going to rotate this around and add a few blades of grass around in a circle there. All right, nothing fancy. And maybe scale some of them down a little bit and scale some of them up a little bit. Okay, and now I'm going to choose connected in the proportional editing fall off and give some variation to these different blades of grass. So just grabbing one vertice here with proportional editing, I can give it some variation just by moving it around. I have connected on, like I said, so I'm only moving the one that's connected to it and not the ones next to it. So I'm just going to give some variation to these. Maybe rotate, not so they're not all facing the same way, but kind of rotate them so some of them kind of go that way a bit. All right, that's kind of sweet. And that should do it. So what I'm going to do now is grab all of them, shift D them. Scale them down on the Z a little bit, and then scale them just up a little bit. Okay, maybe scale them down on the Z a little bit too. Uh, and now you can see we have them layered. So if I go Command Z and keep those selected, I can rotate them along the Z and give us even more variation in these uh, little grass bush that we're creating here. So rotate them along the Z until you find an area that looks good. You see here, rotate along the Z some more. That might be good right there. And if I go rendered, you can see we have a nice little grass bush coming along. Not too bad. Some of these blades are a little weird. Uh, they might need just a little tweaking. But uh, psh, like this one here, maybe they're being a little too stretched. So I can kind of pull them out a little bit and straighten them up a little bit. But nothing too bad. And uh, you can also grab just individual blades and kind of shift D them, pull them out, rotate them around a little bit, give yourself some variation. But that's about it. You create your bush and uh, it's pretty easy. So this is one of the easiest assets to create right there. So let me see what that's looking like. Not too bad. This one's kind of far out there though. Let's just grab that one, rotate around the Z there. Pull it in a little closer to the top view. Whoops, what did I do? There we go. So just kind of a crazy mess of blades of grass, and uh, that's all you want. If there's some that are too sharp and too uh, sharp, basically, you can kind of round them off. But yeah, this one I think is a little too harsh there. OK, so let's see what that's looking like rendered. Looking pretty nice. So um, now we're going to get into the material a little bit here. Let me just grab that blade and pull it down to earth. And let's quick add a sunlight in here too, so we have some lighting to work with. So let's just add a basic sun lamp, change the strength to something like 5, and make it a little sharper shadows by taking that down to 0 0.01. And let's give it a little yellowish hue. All right, so when we render now, we have some sunlight on our grass. Okay, so it's looking pretty good, but it needs a little love. So the modeling could be smoothed out a little bit more still. I think I went a little crazy on some of these going a little uh, haywire. And you can also turn off this now back to medium point if you're done with that. Rotating around the center. 
Okay, so just kind of smooth them out a little bit. Anything that's too harsh looking, you can round off. But that's looking okay now. All right, so let's get into the materials real quick on this blade of grass, or patch of grass, I should say. So I'm just gonna split my window here down in the corner and go to my note editor, close these windows with N and T for the toolbar and properties tab. Now you can see we already have a transparent shader and our diffuse shader because of that setting we chose in the import images as planes add-on. Um, so I'm gonna leave these here. I'm just gonna grab these two and drag them back so I have some room to add in some new shaders. What are those shaders gonna be? Well, I like to put in a glossy shader. So I'll add a mix and a glossy. Drop that in right there. And I also like to add a little subsurface scattering as an option. So I'll duplicate that one more time and then add in a subsurface scattering node, drop that in there, and then one last one, and this is gonna be a translucent shader. So I'm gonna use an add shader for this one, drop it in there, and then add a translucent shader right there and pop it in the top. Okay, so we need to add the color of this grass to the subsurf and to the translucent. We need to change the subsurf settings a little bit here. We're gonna take the scale down a lot. And then the radius, we want to give it more of a green color. So green is the bottom value here, blue is the middle one and red is the top. So we're gonna turn down the blue and the red a bit and leave it at green mostly. Turn down the scale some more and turn down the factor a bit. Now the glossiness is gonna be way too much at that setting too. Let's make it a little bit sharper with like a 0 0.02 and then take the amount way down. And let's see what we're getting here now. It's not looking too shabby. Not at all. So uh, go back to solid view. And just a few more settings that I want to quick add here. And this is going to be the randomized color. Now you could add some bump mapping to this grass, but it's so small and low poly that you won't really notice it. And it would just slow down your render. So I'm not going to bother with the bump. But uh, what I will show you is the randomizing color. This is big for nature assets. So how do you add randomizing color? Well, you add in a input object info. And you see this object info node has the random option there. So I want to use that random option to add random color. So what colors do I want to randomize it with? Well, I'm going to add in a converter color ramp to do that. I'm going to change it from linear to consistent. And I'm just going to pull this value over here and hold control and put in a few more options in there just by clicking along there holding control and uh, first I'm going to change this black color here by grabbing that little box there we'll give this kind of a deader looking grass color something like uh, that is good I think eh, maybe a little all right something like that and then we'll give it a maybe slightly more alive looking color a little yellowish and then maybe even some more green color and maybe a different hue of green, a little darker maybe, and then maybe something really kind of dark, dead looking, a little darker. All right, so you just give yourself some random colors there. Take the random factor of your object info node and plug it into the factor of your color ramp and drop in a color mix. We'll pop that in there between our image texture and diffuse. We'll change it from mix to screen and we'll drop this color in the bottom socket there. We'll want to take this color and also use it for the subsurf and the translucent. Now this factor here is going to be the amount of random color that uh, the different grass uh, models get. So you see this one looks a little bit dead. I'll shift D it and it'll look a little bit greener. I'll shift D it again and it'll look a little bit dead and basically random. If I crank this up all the way, you'll see it coming into a 100% factor where you're getting a lot of random color Typically, it doesn't look so good if you have it on all the way. You want to keep it something a little bit smaller, like that is good. And you can give the color some even more uh, variation by really kind of changing these colors quite a bit. So uh, something that is cool. It's a really cool option to give your nature assets some good variation. So I'm just choosing a few extreme colors here just so they kind of show up a little bit better when it's something like that. So you can see this is a good way to add some random variation. I think I might add a few 
different green hues in here too. There we go. And maybe a little bit of a bluish hue. Just add one more in there. A little bit of a bluish grass. Cool. And then you can see if I turn the factor all the way up, you're really getting the yellow and the green showing up. And if I duplicated these all one more time, you can really see the variation coming in. Cool. Exactly what we want, except not so much. Turn down the amount to about a 0.4, and uh, we can move on. So let me just delete all but one of these real quick. All right, back to our grass here. Um, some of these are a little harsh looking still. I don't like the way like this one looks here with that last kink in it. So I'm just going to grab some of these and kind of round them out, fix them up a little bit, but all right, that's looking better. Not too bad. So there's one grass little bush and the material I would say is pretty finished on it. Uh, it would look really good with the translucent and shadows and stuff if you added more of them. But we can call that little grass bush done. Perfect. And let's move on to our next uh, asset. Okay, so our next asset will be a flower. A flower is fun to create, and uh, we use the sampling generator for that. So let's move our cursor to the center here. Shift S, cursor to center. And uh, let's go Shift A, add in a sapling, or curve and add tree. That's how you do it. Now you see you get this stick and you might think, how do I change that? Well, you hit T if you've never used the sampling uh, add-on before and you have your settings here. Now, one thing to keep in mind is if you go to select your tree, rotate it or something, your settings all disappear. So your settings will disappear if you do anything else but change the settings basically. So be careful not to do too much in your Blender settings because you'll lose your tree settings. So let me just quick add that back in again. All right, so I'm gonna use the bevel option here and let's just change the scale way down real quick. And that should do it. Let's take the radius scale down a bit too because we don't want this to be so fat. All right, so to use the sapling add-on, you have basically different tabs in your settings. Geometry, branch splitting, branch growth, blah, 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 blah. If you've never used it before, you're basically going to be just working in these few settings here. We're not going to be using leaves or anything uh, out of the add-on. So let's go to branch splitting. And uh, let's change the base size, crank that down a little bit. And let's take the number of branches way down. Uh, in fact, I think I'm going to go just with one level. So you see you have just one stick here. And that seems kind of pointless. But if you take the segment splits up a bit here, and you can see we start splitting off a little bit there. Now they're all splitting at one point, and that's because this doesn't have much detail in it. So what I want to do is go to the branch growth and give it a little bit more resolution in the curve resolution there. So now you can see the splitting up and down it much better. Uh, the other option I want to change is some of the curvature settings here. We want these to curve out more. So change the curvature settings a bit and branch them out something like that. It's looking kind of good. You change the variation there a bit too. Not looking too bad. Um, basically just a lot of fiddling around with settings, but back in the branch splitting, you can do some things like turn down the amount of branch splitting now because we did way too many. All right, something more like that is good. Nice, and let's take the down angle a bit. Okay, that's not really change anything. Split angle. You kind of get some varying split angles there, so you might find something you like doing that. Variation, again, you might find something you like doing that. I'm kind of liking that a little bit as a unique looking plant. Um, and yeah, I just like to kind of play around with the settings a little bit till I find something I'm happy with. All right, I kind of like that. That's not looking too bad. Maybe just turn the resolution up a little bit by cranking these up here. And that's not too bad. Let's turn the curvature down a little bit. Or down a little bit, yeah, it's too much right now. Bring it back up a little bit. Okay, and I think we have too many splits going on, so back in the splitting, we can take it down a little bit again. Okay, something like that is what I'm going for. And you can give it a base split too, that'll give you some nice variation if you want. Might be too much though. 
Basically, it's a lot of just trial and error, playing around with the different settings, and finding something you're happy with. Kind of fun. You get a lot of varying looks. Alright, so I'm going to settle with something towards the beginning here, nice and simple. And maybe just change the split angle a little bit there. Perfect. Nice and simple, nothing too fancy. Add a few more splits onto that. Alrighty, that looks pretty decent. And I'll go with that. So everything looks pretty good. Maybe in the branch growth, I would change the taper a little bit so they don't taper off to nothing. All right, so we have a little thickness at the end of those tips there. And that would do it. Cool. So I can now select my mesh and scale it down, and you'll see all my settings are gone forever. All right, now it's also set up as a curve right now, and I want this to be a mesh, so I'm going to go Alt-C. Um, Alt-C, there we go and convert mesh from curve to mesh, basically. And there we go, we have our low poly mesh there. So, first off, let's add some leaves across this. Well, we don't have any leaves, so let's quick make a leaf. Let's just pull that to the side for now and add our leaf for this flower. So, we're gonna do that with the images as planes option again, import images as planes, and let's grab a leaf weed. One like this would work well. All right, and similar to the grass, I'm going to want to tab into edit mode and go into top view. I can go to, no, I'll just stay in edit mode. I'm going to pull it up to that point there. So you can see now when I switch to rendered view, it's at that point there. That's perfect. And because I sent those, set those settings in the uh, images as planes add-on, the future textures that I open up, like this one here, is coming in properly uh, with the alpha mask and everything working. So... I'm just gonna add, let's just do two cuts in here, and let's kind of pull that up a little bit to give this just a little variation, a little curvature to this leaf. And let's choose smooth shading on that. Cool, we go rendered, we have a nice little curve to that leaf there. That's what I want. And let's put them on the, uh, the little twig we have here as our flower. So to do this, I'm just going to quick create a vertex group here. Go new vertex group call these leaves and basically I want them to be across the whole thing boom except for the tips of them here because this is gonna be where I have flowers on them all right so take off the tips and also I don't want them at the joints well maybe I want them at the joints all right so I'm just gonna take them away from the very bottom and the top so basically what you can do is you select everything and go assign so everything is on it and then you can come back and select the ones you don't want and click remove. Now if I go to weight paint, I can see how the tips are all blue, which means there won't be any leaves there. Everything else is red and there'll be leaves. Awesome. So let's quick throw those leaves on that with a particle system here. New particle system, hair, advanced. Let's take it down to just something like 20. We're gonna use an object for this, We're not a group. We're gonna choose object duplicate the leaf weed. You can see I'm coming across there. Choose rotation. Nope, we have to quick rotate our leaf here. Let me quick do that. Rotate 90 along the Y. Negative uh, 90, I believe it is. Yeah, that looks about right. And you can choose rotation then. Um, and then they'll show up properly. I believe I rotated that. Let me quick see here. Uh, no, kind of want to rotate them like that. So you can kind of play around now with the rotation after choosing rotation the particle settings. You can kind of play around with the rotation of how you want them to look on the plant by just rotating your object, which is kind of fun. So I want them to be kind of rotated downward. Uh, I want to go ahead and choose rotation in my particle settings here. And let's use um, normal. All right, there we go. And you can see the leaves kind of coming off nicely across the mesh there. I need to quick tell it not to come out of the tips like I did when I created that vertex group. So I'm just going to go down to vertex groups and pop it in there. Leaves. Boom. All right, so none of them are really coming out of the tips. If some of them still are, kind of like you see here, you can come back with the weight paint and the subtract brush right there and kind of paint them away even more. Let's turn the strength up. Paint them away even more because they're not listening. Sometimes they just have to be pushed down a little bit further. Cool. And that looks pretty nice. So uh, you can play around with a number of leaves. 
some of these random settings to give them some random variation. Maybe just a little bit bigger there. Some random size, random rotation. Spin them, pull them down a little bit with the phase option here. Um, this should be rotated down all the way. Boom. And then we can kind of pull them back up with the phase option there. Cool. Something like that. And if we go rendered, you can see those leaves being spread across our plant. Nice. So something like that is about what I want. I think that looks good. Maybe just add a few more. Crank it up a few times. Oops, keep advanced settings there. And then give it a little more random size. Cool. So that's our leaves. And if you're ready and happy with them and you want to apply them, you can, uh, you can do that now. Basically, we're just going to go to the modifiers, convert the particle system, go back to the particle settings, and delete it off of the mesh by clicking that minus button. And then without touching anything, you can go Control J, and they'll all be joined together on through the stem. Um, stem's not rendering because I don't have a material on it, I believe. Yes, I don't have a material. So let's quick give that stem a material. Just give it a new blank kind of green material and select the stem with L. Actually, what we can do is we can just select the leaves by clicking that material and clicking select. And I guess that's not going to work. <laughs> Forget that. You can just hit L and grab all the twig options on your twig here real quick and assign that new material to them. Awesome. How's that looking? All right. Um, I'm not going into the detail on these materials just yet because I'm still putting on the uh, the flowers and stuff. So before I get into the fine details of the material, I'm just going to leave them blank like that. Um, and I'm going to add in the last texture, which is going to be my flower. So I'm going to use this flower head right here. And let me quick go to rendered view. Okay, it's showing up nicely there. I'm going to go tab, W, subdivide. And then over here, you see I have these number of cuts. I'm going to change that to two. So we have a little square in the middle there. Uh, now I can kind of grab the corners here, turn proportional editing on, and maybe grab actually all of them on the outside edge here, vertices, and lift them up, something like that. And if I choose smooth shading on this as well, let's give myself a little more room here in my toolbar, you can see I have that flower kind of cupped like that, and that looks pretty nice. Not too bad. Um, you can give a little variation if you want, so it's not like completely cupped evenly. Looks a little more natural. And all I have to do now is go to this uh, stem of our flower, add in another vertex group real quick right here. We'll call this one flowers. And this one's just going to be the tips there, like you guessed. Not that there, just the tips. And click assign. Cool. Go to our particle settings, new particle system, new one. This is going to be hair, advanced. We only want like five because I think there's only six. We want six. We want them to be evenly distributed. We don't want them to be random. We want them to be from the vertices. We want them to be from this object, which is the flower head. And we want it to be from this vertex group, which is the flowers. And you can see the flowers all showing up nicely there. You choose rotation and then you rotate your flower head real quick here to the side. Just rotate 90 along the y-axis, I believe it is. Nope, not along the y-axis. We'll just go to right view with number pad three and rotate it 90. That's what we want. And there you go. If you go rendered view, you can see the flowers on top and it looks very nice. So that's it for the basic modeling and we can quick add some details to the leaves and whatnot similar to the grass all you'd have to do is add in some glossy shaders some translucent shaders just like you did with the grass uh, on the leaves okay so to save on time i quickly put the same materials that i did in the grass on these leaves here just so they have the translucency the subsurface scattering and whatnot um, and now I'm going to show you one quick step to add the bump mapping because I think these leaves could use a little bump mapping on them. Uh, so to do that, you're just going to add in a vector bump and take the color into the height. Okay. 
And what I also want to do is drop in a converter color ramp in here so I can tweak what the bump height will be with this color ramp. And then just take the bump into all of your materials. So drop it into the glossy, the subsurf, the diffuse, and the translucent. There we go. So you can see this bump is showing up crazy heavy. Now uh, what I'm going to do is tweak my color ramp settings to tweak the bump a little bit here. So because I enabled that node wrangler add-on in the beginning of the tutorial, I can just go control shift and check out what this, this uh, bump map is looking like and tweak it. So I'm going to pull in the blacks a bit, give it some nice harsher black. Don't mind the black outline, that's not going to be applied because the uh, alpha is taken out later. So you can kind of see where you can just tweak the bump map with the color ramp. Now basically the black areas I believe it is, or maybe it's the white areas will be bump and the black areas won't be. Either way we can invert it with this option here. So something you want to find where the highlight is white and the dark is black and that will be a better bump map. So just pulling these values in a little tighter will uh, give you a better looking bump map. So let's go back to what our original material is by just connecting that back up. Control shift. And you can see our bump map. It looks like the black areas, there's no bump, the white is bump. So I think I want to flip that. So I'm going to choose invert. And that seems to look a little bit better in this case. And now I'm going to take the strength down a bit. Also, I want to take the distance down a bit. So I'm going to go down to about a 0, 2 on the distance. And then just take the strength down some more. Do we have something like so, maybe? I'm um, just kind of seeing what it looks like with a little more distance here. Okay, take the distance down even more. Zero, two. Cool. Now, that's not too bad looking. Maybe take the black down a little bit. All right. Still a little bumpy, so I'll probably take that down to about a point two. Then you kind of see it working a little bit better there. All right, that's not looking too shabby. Not too bad at all. And with the color variation like I dropped in here too, you can tweak these to give these leaves different colors and uh, variation. So that's not looking too bad. Let's quick give that stem a little bit of love uh, by tweaking that material a little bit. And we'll give this just a little bit of a darker, uh, slighter yellowish color. Cool, and then we'll give it some translucency with an add shader. Some translucency, boom, that will look good. And let's give that the same color as the diffuse. And the last thing I want to add in is a little bit of glossiness because those stems sometimes are glossy if you think of like a dandelion or something. So drop in a glossy shader there and just crank the amount down a bit. All right, sweet. Not too bad looking. So there's our flower and there's our grass. Now the flower heads themselves, let me see here, could use a quick bit of love as well. Let's just pull these back. They could use a little bit of glossy and they could use a little bit of bump. So I'm gonna quick do those same settings that I did in the last leaf and grass on the flower head. And I'll be right and back. And drop your color into that. If we check this out, turn the multiply up quite a bit, bump, and the glossy on those flower heads and it looks looks a lot better. So same material, just your glossy shader with your mix, your add shader with the translucent and the bump connected to them all. Very basic. But uh, you can see where it's kind of time consuming and that's why I uh, quick jumped ahead there. Now um, let me quick take a look at my leaf weed here. Okay, something looks like I could see through that a little bit. I think it's just Oh yeah, there's two leaves there. All right, so um, I think the leaf branch is a little bit saturated, maybe, there we go. All right, so uh, the last material I wanna show you guys how to make, I showed you the grass setup and the lead, the flower setup real quick there. Last one I wanna show you is rock. Now, before I get into the rock, I wanna quick show you one other method for doing the grass. So, um, I showed you the mesh grass like this, but another method I like to use, and this one is super simple, is Shift A, import images as planes, and I'll import something like this grassy bush here that I shot the other day. 
Let's just rotate that 90 along the Y axis so it's looking right at us. Tab it at a mode and pull it up to that uh, origin point there. Right around there is good. And if I go to rendered view, you can see we have that grass thing. It's on a side. So a quick need to tab it at a mode and rotate it negative uh, 90 degrees there. Cool. All right, now it's proper. Um, basically, I want this to be the same material as the grass I did here. So I'm just going to take this material, give it the single grass material, which is this one, um, and then click that little checkbox there so it's its own material. And all I have to do is change the texture now to the new one I brought in here, the grass bush. And now it has the same material settings on both of them. Awesome. So you can see right now it's just a flat plane though. You look at it from the side and it looks like nothing because it's flat. So what you do to give this some three dimension is, da -da -da, first off, I'm gonna give it a cut in the center so we can kind of bend it a little bit there. All right, something like that. And uh, I'll smooth that out by using the smooth option in the toolbar there. Give myself a little more room to work here. Now what I'm gonna do is just tab it into mode, shift D, rotate it 90 degrees along the Z axis. Turn off proportional editing real quick. Rotate 90 degrees along the Z axis. So we have two of them. And now I go to rendered view and you can see when I go all around it, it looks like it's one mesh because no matter how you turn, you still see grass. So this works great for some low poly work. You might have to tweak it a little bit, like you can see the base of it here needs to be pulled over a little bit. But this works great for some variation in your grass. And if you use a combination of this along with this, where you have the size in some cases and others is simpler, um, you'll get some really good looking results. I think some of these blades are a little fat here. Let me just tweak that up real quick. Skinny them up a little bit. Just alt clicking the edge there and dragging it. Cool. So you can see how that's another method of creating grass. And uh, this is the same material. If I duplicate it, it'll have the varying colors and whatnot. So there's two options for your grass. And uh, last but not least, here we go. We're going to do the rocks. So I can hide these or move them to their own layer now, so they're not in my way, just my nature assets. I'm gonna go Shift S, cursor to center, and I'm going to add in an icosphere. That's right, an icosphere is what I use to create my rocks um, when I'm doing them low poly. And that is because they're nice for sculpting. I'm gonna jump into sculpt mode here. I'm going to choose dynamic typology, dino typology, choose that, Choose something in the detail size that is pretty um, small. No, big. You want uh, you want low poly. So I'm gonna go constant detail, and we'll just see what 30% looks like. 30% is a little bit too much, actually. Let's go 50%. Something like 50%. And we're using our sculpt draw brush. Let's use F to create our brush a little bigger, and Shift F to change the strength a little stronger. All right, so I'm just gonna quickly sculpt out my rock. Using control, you can take away parts of the mesh, and using the normal click, you can add parts to the mesh. So it's really simple. Right now I have the mirror on, I think. That's on automatic, yeah. Turn off the mirror there in the symmetry lock, so it's not doing that. All right, and yeah, it's really easy to just take away parts of the mesh and draw in parts of the mesh. And this can be as detailed as you want. Basically, you can change the detail up if you want it to be really nice and detailed, but this is low poly, so I'm going to keep it around there. All right, so I'm just going to quickly hack at this uh, this UV sphere and find myself a rock. So rocks are random, so you don't have to worry about looking perfect. Let's choose smooth shading there, and I'm already kind of liking the way this rock's looking. Just kind of uh, experiment. Maybe kind of layer it if possible, depending on how much detail you're giving it, because layering it always looks good with rocks. Keeping parts of it lower and little parts of it higher. All right. And that doesn't look too bad. There is a pretty decent looking rock, if I do say so myself. Now, you can always add a subsurf on top of these if you need to for more detail later on. You can see it looks pretty good if you had a subsurf on that too. You get that kind of layered rock. Um, 
depending on your scene, if you have the uh, the ability to turn it up and still render fine, you can do that. Otherwise, you might need to turn it down. I'm just going to leave it at one for now, and uh, let's quick texturize this rock now. So I'm just going to tab into edit mode, select it all, and go U. I think I'll try cube projection, and we'll see how that works. Go to my UV image editor here, and we get that. Eh, that's not going to work too well, I don't think. We could try sphere projection, and that might give us some good results. So we'll try that, and uh, now I'll split this window again here just by dragging that up real quick, and open up my rock texture. So let's grab a rock texture, got a few of them here. Again, you can find your textures from CG Textures if you're doing this uh, at home. I'll put some links in the description. Otherwise, if you uh, purchased my asset pack, you can use those textures to create more of your own assets. I'm just going to use this rock texture right here. Uh, maybe I'll use this one actually, rock one. I'll just grab that in right there. And if I go to my material settings, new material, let's switch over to the node editor right here. And here we go. Just going to drop in a new input, or yeah, input. No, I'm sorry. Texture, image texture right there. And pull up our rock texture. Drop it into the diffuse, and we'll see what we're getting. So the UV unwrapping job stinks. It's no good. Let's see what the uh, cube projection looks like. If I tab into edit mode here real quick and go cube projection, this is a quick way of seeing what looks best. And I kind of like that. I think that's what I actually went with is the cube projection. It surprisingly looks well on the uh, the rock. So go ahead and go with the cube projection. That looks nice. And now we just have to drop in a little bit of bump mapping and a little bit of uh, glossiness. Those are the basics. So I'm going to add in a mix shader, glossy like before. So this would be our slight bit of glossiness on our rock. Rocks aren't very glossy though, so don't go too crazy. And our vector bump. Drop that into the height, pop it in there, and pop it into the diffuse. Whoops, I put this before the diffuse. That's a that's an amateur mistake right there. Plug that in. The diffuse has to be in front of the mix shader. There we go. And hook that up right there. Now, uh, I think I'll also drop a color ramp in here like I did before so I can tweak the bump mapping right in Blender. And we'll see what that's looking like. Okay, so I'm not seeing too much bump. And I'm not, it's because I haven't hooked it up to the diffuse. So there we go. Connect it to the diffuse, and you'll see the bump. All right, so I can give it a little bit more glossiness, I think. And I can take the bump down a bit. Strength. And let me quick control shift, check this. And that actually looks pretty good on its own. Might just bring the whites and blacks in a tiny bit. All right. Okay, that's what the pure glossy looks like. And then mixed it looks like that. So we can just turn the strength down a little bit on it. Something like that. And our rock is looking pretty awesome. Turn the bump down a little bit too. Just, you don't want a too crazy amount of bump. All right, turn the bump down and then turn the glossy down a little bit as well. Now the last thing that I want to show you with the uh, with the rock is moss. Moss is something that I have on my low poly nature pack. It's an option that you can turn on or off and it's kind of cool because you can really customize your rocks by adding some moss onto them. So to do that I'm just going to duplicate my image texture here and open up a moss texture. You can find moss textures on CG textures as well or you would get them, of course, <laughs> again with the Nature Asset Pack. So quick, open up that moss right there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this to my image texture. So to do that, I'm gonna go Shift A, add in a color mix. We're gonna go ahead and drop this into the bottom. And you can see if I turn this up completely, oops, this is connected to that, there we go. Boom, you can see the moss coming in on that. Now, uh, if I drop it 100%, you see it's just the moss. If I turn it off, there's nothing. Now, uh, I want to mix it with the factor of the alpha. There we go. So now this factor of the alpha right here is the amount of moss. And what I can also do is drop in a input. 
texture coordinate and a mapping node. The mapping node might be, you might have guessed, is to change the size of the moss on the rock. So you want to go vector mapping and you want to choose UV, plug the UV into that one and plug the UV into that one and then plug the vector into that one. So basically this one is the default size but this size can be tweaked now. I'm going to take the scale up to 2 which will make the moss about half size as you can see there. And that looks good. So now if you want to tweak the amount of moss, all you have to do is tweak the amount of this alpha. So I'm going to drop, drop a map or a converter math node right in there. Drop the alpha in, the top node, change it to multiply, drop it in there. Now this value here basically will determine the amount of moss you get on your texture. Really cool. Now uh, we might want it to be so this moss isn't glossy. Well, you could do something with that by, uh, or say you wanted the moss to be bumpy. You have the option, now that you have a separate texture just for the moss, uh, to where you could take the color ramp here, use like, say, a multiply node, drop, I mean, not a multiply, a mix node, change it to multiply, and drop your color into that. If we check this out, turn the multiply up quite a bit, so yeah, because of the alpha, you're getting the solid black areas and that's causing the bump mapping to not multiply nicely on here like I wanted. If you didn't understand any of that, that's fine. Don't worry about it. All you have to do though is drop in a color ramp. Whoops, I'll just duplicate the one I have here. A color ramp, drop it into the uh, settings here and we'll run that through the multiply node to add more bump to the mossy areas. So if we go to this and I flip it, boom, with that little option there, you can see now I have the black areas where I want and the white areas where I want. The black areas I want to be the higher density bump. So I'm going to pull the black in a bit and then multiply it on top here. And you can see it looks like that when it's multiplied on top. And now that's going to be more bump where the moss is. So when I look at it all together, it looks pretty nice. Uh, possibly a little bit too glossy still. So you can always turn that down a little bit. And if you wanted to add more bump to it, you would just take the multiply up on that and it gives more bump to the mossy areas. So uh, very cool. I think I can turn the overall strength up on this node a little bit now too, after doing that. And uh, there you go guys, that's how you create your rocks. So I hope you go off and create a lot of nature assets and have fun doing it. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It is time consuming though, so if you happen to not have the time, well then check out, by all means, that new nature asset pack that I just released, uh, my first product on the Blender store. That would be awesome. So, hope you guys have had fun creating your assets. Like I said, this will be part one for a lot of my tutorials where I'll be needing grass and weeds and flowers created and rocks and whatnot. So I'll be sending you to this tutorial to create some of these and the same, th same way works with weeds. Basically, like I said, with this grass here, you can do the same thing with a weed. If you just shift A, import an image, you grab your weed texture, something like this, boom, tab, drag it over to somewhere like that, in the bottom. Oops, that's the wrong direction. Let me quick drag it over the other direction. Boom, rotate it up so it's standing, 90 degrees along the Y, negative, X. I'm sorry, rotate 90 on the X. There we go. And uh, just shift D it, rotate it 90 degrees along the Z again. So we have that basic shape right there. Now I'm just gonna take the material, the grass, and stick it on there. So single grass, boom, stick it on there. Click that checkbox, change the texture back over to the weed. Uh, I don't have to open it, it's still in the cache here. There we go, back to the weed. And if I go rendered, boom, you can see our weed texture. It has the material on it already. All you have to do is tweak the bases here to get it so it matches on bottom, like so, at all angles. All right, and then change the top here as well. Let me just grab those two in this case and pull it over there. You can add a seam in the middle if you need to, control R. I just did that, uh, but you couldn't see what I was doing, sorry. <laughs> and you can kind of bend it and make it match and pull it around a little bit. But basically, 
you can create low poly nature really simple with some techniques like that. So now you have what looks like a solid low poly plant. From distance it would look awesome. From close up it would look not so awesome. But don't worry about that because these are not meant for close up macro shots. And then if you duplicate it you get the randomizing color like we have set up. So that is as simple as that to make your low poly nature assets. So make some of those and then make some more because they're awesome. So that's it for now guys. Um, Steve again signing off here. Hope you guys had fun creating some nature assets and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.